that whiteboard is visible on my webcam. People can see it. If I wanna draw a nice visual, I'm drawing that and it's appearing right there on my webcam. By working in mixed reality, you can improve focus, increase productivity, and even expand your professional network. My name is Josh. And in this video, I'm gonna be giving you 10 tips to use Immerse for working more effectively. Since my last 11 tips video, Immerse has improved significantly. So if you haven't jumped in and check out the new Immerse updates, I recommend you do. I've linked all the tips of this video in the description below. So if you're looking for something specific, feel free to skip ahead. Be sure to stick around for tip number seven, where we show you how to set up your keyboard in VR and mixed reality. Let's get started. When you first jump into Immerse, you're gonna land in the first run tutorial. I highly recommend that you complete the tutorial so you can learn the basics of Immerse. So in the very first step of the tutorial, you're given the instructions to connect your computer. For this part of the tutorial, you're actually gonna have to take your headset off. I just like to rest it on top of my head like this. Make sure your computer and your headset are on the same Wi-Fi network. That will give you the fastest connection for your virtual screens. Like it said in the instructions, I'm gonna go to immersed.com slash setup. As you can see, it's asking me for my username and pairing code. So if I go back into VR, I see my username is listed and I see my pairing code. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in and submit that. The next step is to install the Immersed Desktop Agent. Click that link. I downloaded the Immersed Agent. It's now installed. Go ahead and click it. There we go. As you can see, I've successfully connected and now these are my screens in VR. That's my actual screen that's on my MacBook. And then here are two extra virtual screens. After the first run tutorial, you will be put into a public room where you have real people who have multiple screens up and are working just like me. Hey, what's up, Tim? Hey, how's it going? What are you up to? Oh, you know, just messing around in Unity. Nice, it's awesome. <laughs> If you see people co-working, then say hello. Tell them it's your first time using Immerse. The community in Immerse will welcome you with open arms. And if you make a friend, you can just click on their avatar and a social panel will appear where you can add them as a friend or let's just say they were on a call and they didn't realize that they were on unmute. You can mute them. Muting them will only mute them for you. It won't mute them in the room. Or on the off chance that that person is being distracting, you could report or block them. You should also know about quick actions. You can find your quick actions on your palm by just bringing your hand up and you can find it on either hand. So either your right or your left. The big button in the middle will show you your credits, the time, your headset percentage, and your session time. You can also click it to open the menu. Next up we have mute and unmute. So if I toggle this, I will be unmuted and then to mute, you hit it again. Next up we have do not disturb. So if I turn on do not disturb, that will basically lower everybody's volume in the room so I can focus on what I have in front of me. Maybe I'm taking a phone call or joining a meeting or I just need to focus and I don't really wanna hear any of the side conversations, but I still wanna co-work with people. So I can turn on do not disturb. And the cool thing about that is it will actually show an indicator for others that I'm in do not disturb. Take a look at Lord Buzz's name tag. He's not in do not disturb. He can hear the conversations that are in the room. Omo Velar has his name tag red with a red icon. He's in do not disturb. It's a indicator that he's focusing or he's on a meeting or on a phone call and can't hear me if I tried to talk to him. All right, next up we have show and hide screens. So right now my screens are hidden. If I click this, it will show my screens. And next we have mixed reality. If I click that, and now I am in mixed reality mode. I can see the world around me. One of the things I love about mixed reality mode is the fact that you can get creative with positioning your virtual screens in your real world environment. For instance, let's just say I wanna flatten this screen and place it on the wall like it's a flat screen TV, the thinnest flat screen TV to ever exist. I love mixed reality mode. But for the purposes of this video, let's jump back into VR. I mean, come on, working in VR is super cool as well, especially if I can work in these awesome environments. I mean, that's the moon and the freaking world is spinning right in front of us. So, hey, can't do that in real life, at least not yet. Come on, Elon. And then next up we have change seats. And so you can navigate the environment by clicking change seats. You'll see all the different seat options appear. Once you find one that you wanna to move to, you can simply pinch select and then bam, you're teleported to that seat. All right, next up we wanna look at moving screens. Moving screens is super simple. All you have to do is reach out and hover over the screen that you wanna move. You'll see a white bar appear above your screens. Simply grab that white bar and you can move your screens. 
To resize your screens, simply reach both your hands out and select the screen itself. When you do that, you can spread your hands apart to make your screens bigger or bring them together to make your screens smaller. When resizing, you can actually move your screens as well. So there's two ways to move your screens. You can either use the top bar or you can grab your screens with two hands where you can resize and move together at the same time. I'm gonna try to make my screens a bit bigger here. All right. Believe it or not, these are three 70 inch screens that are just floating in front of me. When you saw me move these screens previously, I was moving the center screen and all my screens were moving together. And the reason for that is because they are grouped with something called snap grid. If I take this right screen and I push it off to the side, now that screen has been pushed out of snap grid. And you can notice that because when I grab this screen, you see that there are grids that extend from the center screen. So there's one above, to the right, below, and to the left. Now my center screen and my left screen are grouped together and that screen to the right is separated. I could bring this screen back into the snap grid and it will resize to the center screen. There we go. So now all of these screens are grouped again. It automatically updates the screen arrangement, which means I can take this browser and then push it over to the left and push it over to the right. Maybe I wanna have a little bit more flexibility on my monitor positioning and I don't want the constraints of Snapgrid. I'm gonna open my menu and I'm gonna to toggle Snapgrid off. And this basically will eliminate the grid system, right? So no matter where I place my screen, even if it's nearby my center screen, I can make finer adjustments. To make even finer adjustments, I like to turn off auto rotate. And this will actually allow me to rotate my screens by just bending and turning my wrist. If you wanted that added flexibility or the ability to just move your monitors wherever you want, then turn off Snapgrid and auto rotate and you'll get full flexibility to arrange your screens the way that you want. All right, I'm gonna turn Snapgrid back on though. Once I toggled Snapgrid on, my screens fell right back into Snapgrid and now everything's grouped again. All right, let's say I want to change my screen resolution. Now there's two ways you can do that. You can do that within the agent on your computer or in VR. First, I'm gonna show you in VR. First, open your menu, then we're gonna to go to settings, monitor controls, and then I'm going to scroll down just slightly. And as you can see, there are three monitors to choose from. I wanna change uh, my screen over here to the right. So I'm gonna click on two, that's highlighting, so I know that that's good. So I wanna change it to, uh, let's go up, 1920 by 1200. So click that, it says that it's loading. And now this screen is 1920 by 1200. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this right screen back to 1920 by 1080 and I'm gonna do it through the agent this time. So I'm gonna click on my agent icon up at the right. I'm gonna to go to settings, configure virtual displays, and I'm changing virtual display two here again, and I want to change it back to 1920 by 1080. But as you can see, I could also make it a portrait monitor, and there are several resolution options for portrait as well, but I'm gonna change it back to 1920 by 1080, so clicking that and shortly after. And we now have my right screen turned back to 1920 by 1080p resolution. All right, I'm gonna move this browser over to my right screen. Let's put YouTube on. Let's listen to some Ali Abdal. I'm gonna go ahead and mute that video for now. Let's get my Gmail going. In front of me, I wanna have my Google Drive. Let's say I want to add another screen up top for my calendar so I can monitor my meetings throughout the day. And up top, we have a button that says Add Screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And bam, up top we have another screen that has appeared. And so up here, I'm going to add my calendar. Another big part of your work setup is being able to see your keyboard. So let's go ahead and set that up. You're gonna go ahead and open your main menu. And on the bottom bar, you can see an option for keyboard. And as you can see, there are two options for setting up your keyboard. There's keyboard pass-through and tracked keyboard. We're gonna start off with keyboard pass-through. So as you can see, I've entered mixed reality mode. And basically what the instructions are telling me to do is set up a mixed reality portal. So you can use either your controllers or your hand to set that portal up. And so in this case, I'm gonna use my hands. I'm gonna start on the bottom left corner of my keyboard. I'm going to pinch 
and then drag across my keyboard. As you can see, a red outline has appeared and I can drag it as far as I need to. And once I get it to a good spot, I can simply let go. So now you can see here, there's this outline over my keyboard. So that outline basically confirms how big this portal is gonna be. I see that there are three options. I can essentially exit this flow altogether if I just wanna cancel and not set up my keyboard pass-through. I can redo this portal or I can confirm it. I like the size of this portal, so I'm gonna go ahead and confirm. As you can see, I have a keyboard pass-through portal that shows me my actual keyboard. I can see my actual hands and is just a good reference point to be able to work off of my keyboard. Next up, let's try tracked keyboard. And there's my tracked keyboard. As you can see, there is a VR model of my physical keyboard that is reconstructed in front of me and is honestly much sharper than seeing my keyboard through pass through using the headset. If I put my hands over top of the keyboard, I can see my pass through hands, which is really helpful. It just depends on what kind of keyboard you wanna use. If you prefer to have your keyboard tracked in this way, because no matter if I move my laptop to the left or the right, it will track with my keyboard. This is only available on the Meta headset because Meta is the one who actually provides these 3D models. Just know that the tracked keyboard can be a little bit finicky if you don't have good lighting or if the colors of your desk and your laptop are very similar and therefore it's harder for the cameras on your headset to see your physical keyboard. Basically, we just wanna make it easier for the cameras on the headset to find your physical keyboard. So for the best experience using track keyboard, make sure you have good lighting and you're sitting at a desk where your keyboard stands out. Another cool feature we've added recently is the ability to earn credits. So the more time you spend in Immersed with your screens connected, the more credits you earn. You can take a look at your credits by looking at your quick actions. As you can see, I've amassed 10,768 credits. I had more, but I used it to buy some environments. Which segues to my next point, you can use your credits to purchase environments or other in-app redemptions. In order to purchase an environment, you would go to the main menu, then you would go to the My Rooms tab. So currently I'm in the Space Lounge public room. So I'm going to leave the public room by clicking the Leave Public Room button. I am in the Immersed Conference Room, downtown in a high rise. This is another environment that I had to purchase. So if I open that menu and I go to my room again, I can see here that I have all of my environment options. We've released the visualizer environments that you can redeem in which the whole environment responds to the music that you play. For a lot of folks, including myself, music helps us focus. And so those visualizer environments are for those users who want to be immersed into that flow state. Our Orbitarium for larger meetings, the Space Lounge, which we came from, we have a chalet in the Alps. So yeah, a ton of environments that you can redeem. And we're gonna be releasing a new marketplace where there are gonna be many more opportunities to redeem other assets and tools with the credits that you've earned. So rack up those credits. Now for one of my favorite features in Immersed, the webcam. If you're working in Immersed and you need to join a video call or meeting, you can do so with your avatar without having to leave Immersed. Here's how you do it. First, open the menu, and on the bottom tab you can see the webcam option. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that, and a little webcam appeared. I'm going to just place that real quick. Then I'm gonna join one of the meetings on my calendar. So join with Google Meets. And as you can see, there is my avatar. Hey! It's got all the facial tracking on it, which is super cool. No one's on this meeting, it's just me, but it's really cool to be able to see my avatar. And as you can see, there's someone sitting right over there. So you can keep doing your work on your screens, join your meetings, and not miss a beat. It is a conversation starter. People are like, how did you join as an avatar? And then you can, you can tell them. You can take your camera and then, and then show them your screen setup. Show them this. You can tell them, hey, I got my own command center here that I'm working off of, and I'm super productive. Not to mention, I'm working from space. Look at that, that's Australia. The last feature I want to show you all is the whiteboard. To activate your whiteboard, you will need your controllers. So grab one of them. And on the bottom panel, you'll see a whiteboard option. I'm going to go ahead and click that. Flip your controllers over. Use the bottom of your controller to write on the Merce whiteboard. In order to use the whiteboard feature, you're going to have to have some space to write. So move some things around on your desk to make room for that. 
there is a calibration process. I'm gonna take my controller and I see that there's like a glowing area. I'm going to place my controller right in the middle of that and keep it still. Now the whiteboard is completely functional. I can select a color. Uh, let's say I want to create a chart. I don't know what we're measuring here, but whatever it was started off really good and then tanked. But then there was redemption. And then on the other hand, this thing started off really bad and then went really good and then went really bad. And this can be a super cool collaboration tool for a lot of folks if you're needing to actually visualize maybe some concepts. I'm gonna write a nice positive message here. And if you wanted to share this message with other people, if you're in a collaboration room, you can use the suspended whiteboard and now display this message to everyone. Here is another really, really cool aspect of the whiteboard. Let's go ahead and start that immersed webcam again. I'm gonna join this meeting by myself. But guess what? That whiteboard is visible on my webcam. Whatever I draw on the whiteboard, people can see it. If I wanna draw a nice visual, draw a house, this is me storyboarding something. And then basically I'm saying, hey, I want you to leave the house. That's the first scene. I'm drawing that and it's appearing right there on my webcam. To be honest, there's not very many great tools for whiteboarding and video chat, but using Immersed, you can still maintain your full workflow and then just add on the whiteboard tool and be able to share it with others. With Immerse, we're really trying to make all of these tools available to you all in the same place. So you don't have to worry about breaking focus or opening up new apps. All of this stuff is accessible to you using Immerse. If you're having any issues in Immerse, whether that's getting your computer connected or fine tuning your screen setup, our help docs are linked in the description below. But if you're trying to get your questions answered quickly, the best way to do that is through our Discord community. I can't stress this enough. We literally have a 45 second response time. Oh, Renji's calling, one second. Hey Renji. Oh, I'll tell them that. Tell them that we only have a three second. You know, that's crazy, because I was already, I was literally just telling them that. Uh, yeah, tell them that it was a three second response time, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 okay, yeah, no, no, I got it. We literally have a three second response time. Let me caveat this. From 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday, we have a three second response time. We may be slower to respond outside of those hours or on the weekends, except for Scott, and Romeo, and Ryan, and Caleb, and Julie and Kennedy. All right, you know what? Forget it. Three second response time, period. That's it for this video. If you found value, please drop a like. It will help us significantly with the YouTube algorithm. Also, subscribe and hit that bell icon to stay up to date with Immerse content. Until next time, stay hyper-focused.